So this is going to be my more advanced survival hunter guide. Um, I'm going to be going through everything I went through in my last guide and then more. I am going to be putting timestamps in the description for all the different parts if you just want to skip things you already know and such. But I am, um, at least in the talents, there's like maybe one or two things I'm changing. So if you want to have a look at that, go ahead. Right, so first I'm just going to go through the talents again. Um, there's pretty much only one change I would say from my original, but because I'm just going to go through everything. Um, first you want to take throwing axes. Um, because in, at least in my opinion at the moment, way of the Mokhnathal is kind of just too much of a pain to keep up. And animal instincts, it just, it doesn't really compare. I mean, it gives you that um, cooldown reduction, but honestly I find it's not enough. And the fact that it has a chance to reduce the cooldown of Harpoon, which you really don't need in a DPS situation. Next on the level 3rd taunts, um, in my last guide I said take Snake Hunter. Um, now I'd say take Murder of Crows, mainly seeing as Mastery for Survival Hunters got changed and through that buffed, so you don't really need Snake Hunter anymore. So just for flat DPS increase, a Murder of Crows is the best. The level 45 talents, it doesn't really matter. For the level 60 talents, um, for single target, I would go with Improved Traps. And for AoE, I would take Cow Drops. But most of the time, I just stick with improved traps. Steel trap, I'm not really too sure about. I've done testing with it compared to improved traps, and I find the extra damage that an improved trap gives, like with the cooldown reduction, is a lot better than steel trap. Uh, the level 75 talents, it doesn't really matter what you take. Uh, level 90 talents, uh, Dragon's Fire Grenade, I would say the whole way through, AoE and single target. It just does more damage than Butchery and Serpent Sting, at least from the testing I have done. Next on the level 100 talents, we have Spitting Cobra, Expert Trapper and Aspect of the Beast. Aspect of the Beast, in my opinion, doesn't do enough damage, it's kind of shit. Uh, Spitting Cobra, it's the same kind of thing, you don't really need that focus generation, so... And the perks from Expert Trapper are just too good to give up, honestly. Okay, that's a quick rundown of the talents. I'm quick going to go through the artifact weapon. Okay, with the artifact weapon, there is probably three ways I would recommend going. The first one is Sharpen Fang, then My Beloved Monster, then Bird of Prey, then Embrace of the Aspects. And then you come back down here and go to Hellcarver, Raptor's Cry, Explosive Force, Aspect of the Skylord, then Hunter's Guile, then Fluffy Go. And from there you can kind of just fill out, you might want to get these two golden traits. Honestly, those two um, golden traits I find do very minimal DPS. Like at the moment for me, this ticks for about, I don't know, 6k every second, something like that. I mean, it's a nice constant dot, but it's just not up to par. And the same with this one, it's proc chance is actually pretty low. I find on boss fights they do maybe 2% of my damage. And the next way you can go is basically the opposite. So you go Hellcarver, Raptor's Cry, Explosive Force, Aspect of the Skylord, and then you come up here to a Sharpened Fang, My Blood Monster, Bird of Prey, Embrace of the Aspects. And then so forth, like you go Hunter's Guile, then Fluffy Go, yeah. And the third way is basically just to skip Bird of Prey because that's honestly a useless trait and it only leads to Talon Strike, which I said isn't that good. So you just go Sharpen Fang, My Beloved Monster, Hunter's Bounty, Fluffy Go, and then Embrace of the Aspects. And then Honestly, with that, you could also skip Hellcarver, which is only an AoE trait. So you go straight to Raptor's Cry, then Explosive Force, then Asset to the Skylord, then Hunter's Guile. And then you fill it out from there. The one I would probably most recommend going 
if you're looking to get seriously into Survival Hunter, is the third option to skip Bird of Prey and Hell Carver. Okay, I'm just going to go through a quick rundown of Survival Hunter's abilities. So first we have Mongoose Bite. Mongoose Bite is the main ability for survival. Pretty much everything revolves around it. Um, what it does, does a flat amount of damage, and every time you use it, it increases its own damage by 50%. This comes in the form of a stacking buff. Um, when you get stacks of this buff, it does not recharge the duration of the buff, so you have to work with those 14 seconds. Next we have Lacerate, which is just a basic dot. Um, we have Raptor Strike. Raptor Strike, in my opinion, is a very useless ability. I know I've got it um, like in a main slot, my action bar, but I very, very rarely use it. I maybe use it once a boss fight if I'm just completely out of things to do. Next we have Flanking Strike. Um, basically it's an attack that you and your pet do and <clears throat> like it says if the target is attacking you your pet will deal 50% increased damage and it will increase the threat but if it is attacking anyone else so that can be a tank or anything that means your attack will deal 50% more damage um, this is a good time to mention the survivor hunters mastery uh, Soil Hunter's Mastery is every time your pet attacks, like for instance I have 10%, so every time it attacks I have a 10% chance to get a charge of Mongoose Bite. So what Flanking Strike does is it has double the normal chance to trigger Hunting Companion, which is the Mastery, so I would have 20% chance to get a stack, well, a charge of Mongoose Bite from my pet's attack. Then we have the talent, the murder of crows, just basic dot. And then we have throwing axes, just, that's what I use for my basic filler. We have carve, which is your main AoE ability. And then muzzle is just interrupt. Um, we have dragon's fire grenade, which is the talent. You just throw a grenade, it explodes, and it has a radiating dot. Then we have Explosive Trap, that you um, you just do that, it plops itself down um, in 5 yards and then something comes close enough, it explodes, does immediate damage and then applies a dot to everything it hits. Then we have Aspect of the Eagle, um, it grants you and your pet 10% increased crit chance on all abilities and it gives your pet's attacks an additional 25% chance to grant you a charge of Mongoose Bite which is very, very good. This is pretty much the only flat deep, like, cooldown, DPS cooldown that Survival has. And then the Artifact ability, which is Fury of the Eagle. It does physical damage in a cone in front of you, and it's channeled for 4 seconds. Um, this benefits from the buff from Mongoose Bite. So, Every stack of the buff you have it also increases the damage of Fury of the Eagle by 50%. Its channel time adds to the timer of the buff from Mongoose Bite, but if you cancel Fury of the Eagle before it's finished, the remaining channel time is removed from the buff. So you can't just activate Fury of the Eagle and instantly get more time on the buff. Uh, those are the main DPS abilities, and the rest is just utility, like tar traps, just slow. Aspect of the turtle is your, like, oh shit button, basically. Um, cheetah, speed boost, exhilaration just heals you, and then you have your engage, which is harpoon. In terms of trinkets and your best in slot, um, at the moment, best in slot for survival hunter, in terms of trinkets, is... The Guam Trinket, the Stat Stick, which is that one there. I've only got a crappy one, but yeah, pretty much any version of that because we don't have a stat priority, so just the basic Guam Trinket is the best. And other than that, I would recommend Bloodthirsty Instinct. 
In terms of legendaries, your best in slot legendary is Call of the Wild. Now, this legendary is pretty much essential to doing really good DPS as a survival hunter. So as you can see, it reduces the cooldown of all aspects by 50%. Now this is really good, because like I said, Aspect of the Eagle is your main DPS cooldown. And also this works... Oops, wrong button. Yeah, uh, this works with Aspect of the Skylord, which increases the damage you deal with 30% for Aspect of the Eagle's duration. So, with this artifact trait and the legendary, Aspect of the Eagle has a 48 second cooldown and it lasts for 10 seconds. So, Aspect of the Eagle has about 38 seconds of downtime, which is very low. And then, other from that, well, apart from that, um, for your second legendary, it's pretty much anything. Like this is the only other legendary I have. But um, if you have the, if you have any other legendaries and you have to pick one, I would probably go for Hellbrand Rope of the Mist Marauder because it can help with your burst DPS. Survival Hunter is not a burst class, at least not in my opinion. It's more of a sustained damage. For AOE you would want to use Fritzo's finger trap because you can spread lacerate to everything so you can just dot everything. Um, in terms of macros for Survivor Hunter I personally only use one and that is one that basically makes your pet attack whatever you're attacking but I just have it on my mongoose bite so for example Wait, do I, it would help if I had a pet out. Okay, so if I have Larry attacking this dummy, usually if I just attack this dummy, he won't immediately come, but then if I use Mongoose Bite, he comes straight away. Um, this is very helpful because, let's say on a boss light such as Dragons of Nightmare, I think they're Dragons of Nightmare, in Emerald Nightmare, yep, um, the tanks have to spread them apart. Like, this is for like heroic and normal stuff. Yeah, the tanks have them spread apart, and um, when they switch, your pet will go with the one that you were attacking, and it won't immediately be on the dragon that's right in front of you. So, if you just do a mongoose bite, your pet will come straight back, because otherwise, it's going to be out of range or flanking strike, and that can really hinder your DPS. Um, one problem with this is I don't know if this is a problem I have. Um, it's been a number of times that Larry has pulled in Mythic Plus because I've been spamming Mongoose Bite and it auto targets. So Larry just runs off and goes and pulls things. The, I know this can be fixed in the macro, I just haven't done it yet. I can't remember what the macro is. Um, I might write in the description uh, when I found it out. Apart from that, I don't use any other macros. Um, if you have any macros to recommend, feel free to comment them and, and I'll take a look. So, in a fight, I will, of course, your raid leader or whatever, this is talking about raids. Um, your raid leader will do a countdown timer. Uh, when there's two seconds left, you will want to throw Dragon's Fire Grenade because Dragon's Fire Grenade has a very long travel time. If you see. And while that's in the air, it will not pull aggro. So by the time it hits it, your tanks should already have aggro. And your global cooldown should be off and ready. So after you do that, you just harpoon. And then apply Lacerate, Explosive Trap and a murder of crows. Um, from there you do maybe one or two mongoose bites, then you activate aspect of the eagle, use whatever you have left, and then if you run out of mongoose bites just do a flanking strike and then just keep mongoose biting. During this you'll want to keep reapplying your dots. Uh, if you can kind of sync this up for when you run out of mongoose bites, that's ideal, but of course you can't always do that. 
so yeah, that's the basic starting rotation, and from there, when you hit six mongoose bite stacks, uh, this is especially relevant if you run out of stacks, well, if you run out of charges, you will do Fury of the Eagle. And then from there, if you have any charges left, you just use those. Um, a good thing to do is wait until right at the end of the buff. So say there's like a couple, like a second left of the buff, and then you do Fury of the Eagle. Hopefully, by the time Fury of the Eagle is done, you will have a charge of Mongoose Bite. So right at the end of Fury of the Eagle, right at the end of the channel, you want to press Mongoose Bite. It will cancel Fury of the Eagle, and it will do a Mongoose Bite with the six stack buff. It's all about that min-maxing the DPS. Um, in between doing all this, if you have any downtime where you can't flanking strike, you can't mongoose bite, you can't apply any dots, anything like that, you just want to fill the time with throwing axes. One thing I wouldn't really recommend doing, um, especially if you're not really experienced, if you can't manage things properly, um, you should never use mongoose bite if you only have one stack because there's no you know, if you only have one charge because there's no guarantee you'll get another charge within a good amount of time so you could just completely waste that charge it's just a massive waste of dps because doing a mongoose bite without any stacks of the buff it's very low damage and not really worth it so it's not good to do that as any kind of filler you just could i'd rather just wait even if you just have to auto attack for a bit just wait for those charges to come back. Uh, I think that should be just about everything. I'm just going to show you uh, my rotation in kind of real time. So yeah, hopefully that gave you a basic idea of my rotation. I did make a couple mistakes and a bit of bad RNG here and there, but yeah, hopefully you get the basic idea. So yeah, I think that's just about everything I have for you right now. Um, I will be making a short tips and tricks video for Survivor Hunter. I'm doing that separately because I don't want to make this video too long but if you have any questions or if you want to recommend me anything maybe you feel like you could add something to this or anything like that please comment below anything like that would be welcome and uh thank you for watching